reigning and defending champion. The last time we talked, you you were challenging for the title. Uh, a lot's changed in the past few months. Uh, how does it feel? Has it set in yet uh, that that you're the the current champion? I, I know when you first won it, you said uh, you knew. It. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think it set in that night. Um, you know, I feel amazing, and uh, I, I've you know I've now defended my championship, um, and now it's because I just was at uh, NWA Hard Times too, and I. I had the championship on the line against Kiara Hogan. So as well as Mercedes Martinez, but then we saw Deanna come back. I just, um, I'm, it's amazing. Honestly. Um, obviously a lot went into that match and I was excited for an opportunity to, you know, go for the championship. And now on the other side of it, it's just so much has happened this year, honestly, for me. And it's been a crazy year. And, uh, it's it's been a lot of uh, a, a big learning curve, and it's hard to say that. Like you, but we're forever learning in this business, aren't we? So mm -hmm. it's just yeah, it's exciting times. Exciting times. Uh, you just mentioned uh, one of your title defenses. Kira Hogan's talked a lot about how much you meant to her in her career, and just you know, you, you finally got that singles match. Even after she left Impact, you found a way to make it happen. Uh, not and we'll talk about hard to kill in a few minutes but who else do you want to work with like you're in a position where you know you can help more people as champion that maybe you know being the challenger you couldn't is there anybody that you really want to work with uh in um, one way or another yeah i mean i think that's a long list you know which is ironic to think because i feel like that you know that's how much women's wrestling has grown is that there's so many incredible women out there and women that I haven't faced yet, you know, or had those types of, you know, had real caliber matches or championship style matches with, um, and I think, you know, for me, it's about if the match is going to me mean something and, and the reason why the match is happening. Like I, I love dream matches and those one-offs. Um, but it's always as the fan and me, it's always been about the story and the reasons. And so, you know, it, it really just, I'm a, you know, I, I'm the type of champion that will take on every challenge. So if anybody wants a shot at the championship, they can call me for sure. But I just, um, I, it was special for me, I think, to be able to challenge um, or, or give Kira Hogan a championship opportunity because. I've known her since she was a fan and 17 years old and coming to shows and coming to my concerts. And when she would say, I want to be a wrestler and I'm going to be a wrestler. And even when she first started training and to see her grow and grow pretty much on television, because I feel like it all happened so quickly for her. Um, uh, it was amazing, but I did it from the, I did it from the sidelines because obviously I was, back at WWE at the time and doing so much. So I just didn't think that that matchup would ever happen. And so now being able to not only wrestle her, which was really special, but um, to wrestle her for the knockouts championship, uh, you know, a championship that she never held while she was there, or I'm not sure that she, I don't think she even ever challenged for it before, um, before hard times so, too. So it was really special and it was special in a lot, in a lot of ways. And um, so I'm excited about that. I'm actually legitimately very, I mean, the match with Mercedes was awesome. Like I have so much love and respect for her as well. She's incredible. Um, I think now that there's, you know, so many talent, so many awesome women available. Some I've wrestled before, some I haven't, but, you know, there's a, a lot more goes into it when the championship's on the line as well, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I want to wrestle everybody. Well, mostly everybody. <laughs> well, uh, I, I would say to anybody that wants a shot, get in line. It sounds like, you know, you welcome all Step challengers. But uh, hard to kill is January. Not get in line. Step in line. There like you that. go. Step in line. Hard to, <laughs> hard to kill is January 8th. Deanna Perrazzo 
has the next shot uh unless there's a match between now and then uh she, she she's front and center for you uh how are you approaching the rematch this is you you're the champion going in you prove that you you can beat her uh it was a great moment a statement on all the work that you put in this year you proved that you can do it uh but now you have to defend it so how are you approaching this match well, I just, I feel like the stakes are even higher, honestly, because, you know, I was going, I was going into that match with nothing to lose, really, you know, I, I really didn't have anything to lose, but now I actually do have something to lose and that's the championship. And, um, I think too, I'm looking at Deanna, I'm looking, uh, looking at her and I see a very different woman than I did. You know, mm-hmm. I think going into Bound for Glory, I was like, you know, I I have always respected Deanna. And I think, yeah, maybe perhaps respect her a little less as of late because of her attitude and because things like showing up to my house and trying to drown me in a water trough, things like that. But um, I think that she's an incredible wrestler and probably technically, especially one of the greatest out there. And uh I'm all about giving respect, but it's really hard to give respect if you're not getting it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just felt like she just didn't really respect me or any of the work that I've done there at Impact or just at, at all. And so um, it meant it was really good to be able to shut her up for a while, you know. But I see the Diana, this Diana or version of Diana that has come back and. You know, she's very different and I, I, you know, see her, she doesn't have, you know, the whole Diana Virtuosa persona going on with the hats and the robes and all the things. Um, it, it's back to basics and almost like back to her roots. And I have to think, you know, what is she thinking? Because I feel like without this championship, a championship that she held for a very long time, um, and rightly so, but she's a, she's a bit lost. And that makes me, it doesn't make me nervous, but it just makes me very aware that she's a little bit unhinged at the moment. And she really is. And I already know what she's capable of. So it kind of, I just think the stakes are going to get a lot higher uh, on that because I feel like she's, well, she's, already proven that she's willing to do whatever she can to win, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting for us all. Yeah. And uh, you you mentioned she showed up to your house. Uh, Not for nothing. It was good TV, but uh, fans will have to wait and see what, what happens next leading up to hard to kill. Uh, Yeah. You're on, you're on your toes now, even though you're, even though you're the champion. I am on my toes. I will have to say that. So if there's, but here's the thing is that, um, you know, I'm kind of the queen of mind games when it comes to those sort of things. So I I was a little, I was very disappointed in myself that I didn't even think that, you know, that I didn't see that her showing up to my house that I didn't see that coming, but, um, you know, it just kind of got, got heated for a while, but (sighs) I tell you what, though, no matter what happens, it's going to be an amazing match and an amazing match for the fans and attendance Mm -hmm. because both of us are going in wanting to win. Um, I'm going in, you know, with, you know, that I'm not going to lose mentality. Mm -hmm. Like it's not going to happen. So that's just kind of have to what I keep telling myself and I'm training and training harder and I have to almost... I've been looking at different things too, just because, you know, Deanna, when I look at her skill set and her moveset, she's, you know, definitely just ways to like kind of counter her technical, you know, and, and submission stuff. So, um, which has never been my, you know, that, that was never my thing. I was always a high flyer and, and I obviously I do know submissions and holds and stuff like that, but I always, you know, I like a lot of tassels, you know, there you go. <laughs> and high high jump, drop kicks, those sorts of things. <laughs> you're, you're you're a striker and a high. Flyer. No, it's just we're very we're very different women, and we're very different in the ring stylistically. And uh, I think that's what's what's 
so exciting and it's, it's exciting for the fans is, is because it's like the merge of two different worlds, really. Um, yeah, but it, this new, yeah, it's just, I, I've just been thrown off a bit by this new version of Diana, but I just, it's almost more exciting because I'm going like, okay, well, what is she going to do? Because I already know what she's capable of doing when she's very calculated and, and thinking about it. So now that she's a bit like on edge and unhinged, I'm I'm a little bit worried about her, you know, mm-hmm. not worried, but just, you know, aware of it. Yeah. Yeah, you, you guys, uh, you, you present uh, a nice contrast of styles, but at the heart of it, it's it's a good old-fashioned feud. You know, you have a conflict, the title's involved, so it's certainly going to be something to look forward to at Hard to Kill. Uh, one other match that we do know about uh, that I hope gets more attention uh, as we get closer to the event the knockouts ultimate X match for a future shot at, oh your, my God. at your title. Like that, that's a, a great opportunity for somebody to, to huge. get a shot at you, get a shot at the title, but it's a first for impact. It's, it's one example of how uh, women's wrestling is getting more opportunities, especially in the past few months. Think about that. Like that's really exciting. It's the first time ever. And it's a true genuine first time ever. Right. And I think that this is a match that has been talked about for the knockouts for a long time in conversations and stuff. And I think that it's only, you know, and I feel that impact has always been ahead of the curve with the knockouts before it was a thing like the girls, we were all, they were always getting opportunities when I was there before we were always getting really great opportunities that weren't really happening um, anywhere else at the time. However, you know, this X division, you know, that, that it's a brutal match and it's been reserved for the men the whole time. And because it's a very, it's a dangerous match and it's, you know, mm-hmm. very different. And I, and I think that, you know, obviously this is wrestling and the women are tough, but it's still, you know, in in my mind, I think it's, it was still a little bit where the girls can't do that. And that's too, too rough for, you know, whatever the case might be. So it was reserved for the men and now for the ladies to be able to step up and have the opportunity for the first time ever to have this type of match and to really prove, um, I just, you think about all the, the glass ceilings that have had to been shattered at this point to get to now, to get to here. Um, and it's just awesome. It's awesome to see. It's awesome for me to be sitting on this side of it, to be, um, a world champion and watching this type of competition and, and this level of uh, talent out there right now. And it makes me step up my game because obviously we all want to go down. I think in all of our careers, we want to be one of, you know, someone that somebody remembers or that, that, you know, made an impact and, and did some important work out there. And it's a lot tougher for the girls now than it was even 10 years ago, because it, it's so much more demanding on the ladies than it's ever been. And the beauty is, is that all these women are stepping up and they're delivering and it's, it's really cool to see. And so I'm going to, I'm certain that that match is going to be a locker room sellout. Um, I hope that uh, the ladies kill it and I can't wait to see who comes out on the other side of that as the winner. And you know what? I'm so confident that I can't wait to see who that is because clearly they're going to be next in line for uh, my championship. So we'll see who that is. There you go. Uh, I will. Let you, <laughs> I like the confidence. It's, it's not cockiness. It's confidence. You're a confident champion. I'm also a very humble champion. Like, don't get me wrong. It's like, but there is a certain mentality that you have to go like to be a champion. Everybody wants to be the champion, but not everybody is willing to put in the work. And I also believe I'm very, <clears throat> I'm very much of the belief of the mindset. And if you, you could train your mind, then you're already over halfway there. Right. So I have to believe and I have to see myself as the champion and and in that place. And and don't get me wrong, I've lost many a championship and I've been in those vulnerable and weak positions. And there's no doubt, like I'm very aware of my human side and that I am those things. But if I, I it's just 
I got to be there mentally and visualize myself there in order to be already like kicking down the goalposts. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I am very, I'm very grateful. And I'm grateful to come in the Dallas. I'm grateful for this pay-per-view because you guys know I love Texas so much and um, it's going to be fun. And now that we're back on the road and being able to travel into cities and uh, have these types of matches and pay-per-views in front of people again, that's exciting for me. Um, I'm sure it's exciting for the world to be opening back up again, to be able to, you know, come out to a show mm-hmm. and, um, it's going to be awesome. And there's going to be some incredible matches on there. Women and men alike, you know, I, I'm a lady. So obviously I'm going to always shoot the horn for my ladies. Uh, but it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great event. Um, I was just doing stuff with Moose earlier, who's the world champion and he's, you know, so I know that there's just, there's just going to be so much happening and I'm excited about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I just got a chance to sp- speak with Moose earlier. One thing I did ask him, I'll, I'll close out and ask you the same question. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Oh, man. The hardest National question Anthem. I've asked yet. <laughs> yeah, what did he say? I would say, I was going to say na- National Anthem is or like that, but I also am a huge fan especially because my son loves it now of Jim Carrey's the Grinch. Okay. I I like so, it. But yeah. What did he say? Uh, so first he said uh, home alone. And then we argued whether Die Hard was a Christmas movie or not. <laughs> <laughs> it was a friendly it debate. Is a it is. Yeah. I said it was, he said he didn't agree with me and I'm, I'm sure. Is it on? forms 25 days of christmas uh, i don't know if they <laughs> i don't know i, I don't know how good I the just, censored version would be yeah it's probably not that good but i was just over there on free, and it was jingle all the way with one arnold schwarzenegger that's my top three I, i'll put that in there yes very up there um i can't wait for the rocks christmas movie and i told you and i'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there Dwayne, um, I have a Christmas song. And so, but yeah, I'm sure that's going to be amazing. But yeah, the Grinch, but I, I always go back to, um, to National Lampoon's Family Vac- Christmas Vacation because it was one of the classics. And then, um, obviously, uh, you'll shoot your eye out that one. My husband gets really upset with me around the holidays because I put on all these that I see and I watch every single year. Uh, All of them. All of them. You should see my house right now. It's ridiculous. I don't think it's ridiculous, but he thinks it was ridiculous, especially because it was up before Thanksgiving. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's another debate. We'll have to, we'll have to have another time. I'm, uh, I'm the after Thanksgiving guy, (laughs) but. uh, Well, Yeah. That. I'm not a, I'm not, we can just go ahead and say it now. I'm not a always put it up before Thanksgiving gal. I am a after Thanksgiving, you got to get it up. Mm. Right. But, and I'm also, I try to get it down before the new year. And I don't know. I think my grandmother always said that you don't want to take, the, you want to have it down so you can bring in the new year. You want to have it, to, you know, you don't want to bring the old year in with you. Right. Fair um, enough. <laughs> So I've always done that. I've always tried to take it down before Christmas, unless we're out of town or something. But in my mind, I felt like I was home for that pocket of time prior to Thanksgiving. And I was going to be on the road for a while. And then if not, then it wouldn't have been until next week that I would have actually had time to put it up. Like this weekend, next week to put up the Christmas. And I felt like it was like... Then I felt like I was being hum- like I was being very uh, Scroogeish, so that's why I chose to put it up. Then uh, it, it 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 all works. I There's feel- some sentimental value in yeah. there, so we'll for we'll, sure. We'll I allow feel like it. I feel like <laughs> touching me. That's okay. I don't care. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate uh, the time today, Mickey James. You can catch her on Impact Wrestling every week. Impact Wrestling's Hard to Kill on January 8th and 
Gaw TV every Wednesday. Today, as we record, is Wednesday, oh, so check out a new episode and yeah, check them out every you. Wednesday. Awesome. All right. Oh, you're so cool. Thank you.